There are many races in World of Warcraft, and with every expansion we get some awesome new ones, but the olds get kinda forgotten once the expansion is over, since they are meant to tell the story of a land, dungeon, or raid of that specific expansion. So I thought about making some videos telling the major story points of some of these races, since they are actually really cool and some of them take a very important part in the Warcraft lore. Today I want to tell the story of one of the races that were introduced in Mist of Pandaria, and the one that made me want to do this. These are the Genu. Let's start from the very beginning, and how the Genu came to exist. The origin of the Genu goes back to the time before the Sundering. They were actually simple Morlocks, that lived near the waters of what it is now known as the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. The magic of these waters made the bodies and minds of the Morlocks expand, and also granted to a few of them the ability to communicate with the waters. These were called water speakers, the elders of their tribes. Over time the Genu expanded their territory and eventually covered all of Pandaria, making it a great empire, until they clashed against the Mogu, an ancient race created by the Titans to protect the land, and later afflicted by the curse of flesh that made them lose their original purpose. These two forces battled for days until the Mogu eventually won, overtaking the Jinyu Empire, killing everyone that opposes them and slaving the one that survived. Many years passed until another race sought to break their chains and be free of the Mogu. These were the Pandaren. Together with the help of the Jinyu and other races, the Pandaren managed to defeat the Mogu by using a fighting style that didn't require the use of weapons, and that will later be known as monks. After the revolution, the Jinyu pledged alliance to the Pandaren, and took a great part into their culture, by making every Pandaren emperor consult the elder water speakers to tell them about what the future foretold. As time passed, it came time for the Pandaren Shao Hao to be emperor, and as all other emperors, he went to the water speaker. The elder Jinyu told him about a future that Shao Hao wasn't ready for. Destruction and chaos were to come to the world, as the Burning Legion was heading to Azeroth. Shao Hao was ready to do whatever was necessary to avoid this darkness for his people, so he embarked on a journey in search of answers on how to stop this. He fought his fears and became stronger, but when he returned he realized that his people didn't have the time to learn the lessons that he had learned, and so the Emperor became one with the land and showed it Pandaria of the rest of the world, so they could have the time to become stronger and protect them from the darkness that was ahead. And when the Sundering came, Pandaria was sent free and drifted apart, covered by a dense mist that will hide them for thousands of years. Ten thousand years later, the Cataclysm unveiled Pandaria to the rest of the world, and the Horde and the Alliance encountered this continent. Garrosh ordered to send forces to claim this new land, and the Alliance went to stop him and to retrieve their prince, Anduin. The Alliance helped escape Admiral Taylor and a genie called Bold Karashi from a Hosen tribe. These monkey-like creatures are enemies to the genie, and they will later ally themselves with the Horde. After the escape, Bold Karashi guides the Alliance to Pearlfin village, so they could rest. He later convinces his people to join the Alliance to fight the Hosen and the Horde. Elder Lu Shan, the leader of the Pearl Film Chinyu, unsure about the future of his people and these strangers, decides to consult the Watchers. The spirit of Rasharam, former ruler of Pandaria before it was taken by the Mogu, answered and convinced the Elder to join forces with the Alliance. Together they will bring war to the Horde. Those are the major lore moments of the Chinyu. Now let's take a look into some of their culture and where can you find them. The Jinyu taught the Hosen how to survive and become stronger, until they started to gain territory on the Jinyu's land, which led to they hating each other. The Jinyu used the water striders as mounts and pets. Only the most powerful elders can speak to the waters, others are simple warriors, workers, or even priests. The Jinyu used the art of water forging, they used high pressure water to give shape to stone and other materials for their weapons and buildings. You can find the genie on various locations. In the Jade Forest you will have your first encounter with the genie. Here the Alliance players will help them battle the Hosen forces, and in return they will join the Alliance. In the Temple of the Jade Serpent Dungeon you will encounter Wise Mary as a boss fight. This water speaker has been tainted by the corrupted waters of the Shao Doubts. 
by defeating him, you will clear him from his influence of the Sha. In the Karasan Wilds, you will find the Falsong village, a genius settlement, where they will ask for your aid against the Sarok forces that are attacking them. In the Vale of the Four Winds, you can find clever Ashio, who will ask you to follow him to seek into the magic waters that the Pandaren used to grow their giant vegetables. He says that he can't believe what he saw, but you never find out what that is. And last, in the Conline Summit, there is a big Genio village in the Ink Mill Mir Lake. Here, the water speaker Gorai will ask for your help to retrieve his staff from the hands of a Sha corrupted Genio, so he, with your aid, can cleanse these waters and eradicate the evil that is corrupting his people. And that pretty much sums up the lore and history of the Genio. Let me know if you like this type of quick lore videos and if I got something wrong. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time.